The parking space for buses in the car park and beside it is the path to the visitor centre. This is the bridge going to the visitor centre. The left is a pond. <laughs> So, giant gurami. I see something. Tilapia, giant gurami. Very large black tilapia. So this is the visitor centre. Okay, once you pass the entrance desk, you go straight ahead, you come to the toilet. Okay, on the left here, it's a little canteen. And here is the toilet. Beside the toilet, there's a small pond with floating water hyacinth plants and some fish. And there's a boardwalk leading to the bridge over the river. And behind that, a green pond. And near the toilets, there's entrance to the exhibition area called the, the Nature Gallery. So let's have a look at what's inside here. On the left there's a drinking fountain and a green pond where you can often see animals like otters and monitor lizards and terrapins. Two otters. Here there's an interesting exhibit that shows um, models of the heads of different water birds or wading birds and it shows how they have different lengths of beak and different types of beak for eating different types of food. Some with short beaks and some with long beaks for digging deep into the mud to get worms and shellfish that they feed on. Here you have two aquariums in the visitor center. The one on the left shows you a brackish water habitat. Brackish water is a mixture of seawater and fresh water. So the fish inside here are fishes that live in brackish water. Okay. That's an archer fish with the stripes. The archer fish can spit water at insects on leaves to knock them into the water. Near the surface we have a mullet and then these fishes swimming around are scats that eat decaying organic matter. And there's a few other brackish water fishes like this goby over here. Okay, on the right hand side we have a freshwater aquarium. Let's have a look at this. You have freshwater fish like these snakeskin goramis. This climbing perch. They seem to be mainly guramis and climbing perch. Okay. That there is a two spot gurami, which has two spots on its side. This here is a climbing perch. 
All of these fish are capable of breathing atmospheric ox oxygen. They have specially modified gills that allow them to breathe air. Now we're on the mangrove boardwalk. Here you can see nipa or atap palms growing out of the mud. The leaves of these palms were used to make the roofs of atap houses. And the fruits are used in ice kacang. You can see a flower spike over there. And a little gecko on the atap palm front. Here you have some snails and some crabs on the tree trunk. These are tree climbing crabs. When the tide comes in, they climb up the trees to stay out of the water. They are not swimming crabs. Here we have a good view of prop roots of mangrove trees. There are many different kinds of mangrove trees with different types of roots. But they all have in common the need to remain stable in very soft mud and sand and the ability to gain access to air so that their roots can breathe. So this type of mangrove tree has roots that prop it up so it remains stable even in soft mud. Okay, here we have different kinds of roots different kinds of mangrove roots on different kinds of trees. Just now you saw the prop roots. These aerial roots stick up out of the mud so that the, they can breathe air, okay, so that they have access to air. In Malay, the trees that have these kind of roots are called api api, which means fire. I don't know why they're called that, but that's the roots of the api api tree, the mangrove tree with the roots that stick up out of the soil so that they can breathe air. Yeah, the roots are called new metal fours, which basically means that they they are there to take in air. And this is yet another type of air breathing root of a mangrove tree. Okay, these roots are knee like because they come up and then go down again. So we call them knee like new metal fours. New metal fours are air breathing roots. Okay, these volcano like structures are mud lobster mounds or mud lobster chimneys. They dig a deep hole and then the mud that they dig out, they put it outside the hole and it builds up into these chimney-like structures. It's a fiddler crab. One of the claws is very big. It's used for signaling to and, other And this one is very small, right? On, on exposed mud flats, you see a lot of these ice cream cornet shells. Here we see a mud skipper crawling on the mud flats. Mud skippers are strange fish that like to spend more of their time outside the water, crawling across the mud, than actually inside the water, unlike other fish. Jake and I, yeah. yeah, okay, tell me, you know what? Mm -hmm. 